Okay, today's daily rehab routine is a nice collection of seven exercises for you to do at home if you've got a stiff mid to lower back. So what I mean back is this section here, so not really your lower back. I'm not talking about lower back injuries or acute disc pain. I'm talking about the section from about here to about there. So sort of like from your ribs down to a little bit of your lower back. Now this might be when you've maybe done too much gardening, okay, and the next day you're a bit sore and you wake up and it's all stiff. So you haven't really injured yourself, you're just stiff and sore and you're a bit creaky and you need to get moving. And I've got seven things for you to do that are completely body weight or no equipment. So zero equipment with this, it's just stuff you can do straight away, first thing in the morning, to get yourself moving out of pain, get yourself loosened up so you can crack on with your day. Sometimes this happens if you've been in different beds, like if you've been on a camping stretch, you're away on holiday, on a hotel bed, hasn't been the, quite the right bed, and you wake up and you go, ah, oh, geez, I'm stiff, and you think, what have I done? So this routine is a really good one for that. So like I said, seven exercises, and you do them back to back. And we're gonna alternate between a stretch and a muscle activation and keep alternating between the two. So, number one is your thoracic rotations. Now, this is really good because it combines a bit of lumbar rotation and thoracic. Now, you've probably seen this one before, but this is so good. This is the first one I'd start with. So, when you roll back like that, okay, you can do this in your bed, all right? So, you don't even have to get out of bed in the morning. If you sort of wake up and go, oh, geez, I'm stiff, go onto your side, knees bent, keep the knees locked down. Remember, it's crucial that you don't rotate backwards within the pelvis, you gotta keep that sort of down. This part, what I like doing, is going slowly backwards because when you do thrust rotation, as I've explained before, you get to this sort of point here, you've gotta do the breathing work where you slowly relax. If you go too quick, you'll tighten up, so you gotta go slow with this, keep breathing out. Now, every breath out, is a try to let go and relax. So you're slowly going further and further to the floor. So eventually, when you've done about 20 or 30 breaths, this arm and that shoulder should be down the floor. You might be too tight for that, but you're trying to aim for, to relax it to the floor. Don't try and pull it down the floor. You're not gonna try and actively try and stretch it. Let it relax. And the, the breathing part will relax all your thoracic breathing muscles, which gives you more rotation it also opens you up through your obliques. Maybe your obliques are a bit tight through your lower back, your QL, and it just gives you that rotation flexibility. So those long, slow stretches, I would do 20 or 30 seconds there, three times each side, okay? So you just alternate between left and right, and that's your first one. Second one, I'd go straight into a scapular press. Now this is to try and get you in four-point kneeling. You probably want to be off your bed at this point, down on the floor if you like, and just go into a four-point position and trying to get your back into neutral, okay? So don't sit there and sag into extension because that's probably a bit sore anyway. See if you can activate back into neutral spine here, which is a very sort of shallow curve, almost flat through there. This is your chance to work on, can you activate your pelvic floor first thing in the morning, holding a wee, okay, to tighten a little bit of that internal abdominal control in the front end, so not to let it sag and do nothing. So tighten that, and then at this point here, making sure your thighs straight down, your arms straight down. You rotate your elbows forward, so you externally rotate your shoulders, and you're gonna go into retraction, and then up into protraction, using your serratus anterior, so we're doing a scapular press. So it's into retraction here, making sure that spine's in neutral here, and then into protraction. So what you're working on is shoulder blade retraction, protraction, which activates all your muscles sort of underneath your shoulder blades to get them switched on a bit. And it just helps you be in a nice position, activate your core, get a few things switched on, ready for the next thing. So scapular pressing in the morning, even though you think, oh, it's upper body, what's going on? It relaxes that stiffness that's built up. It actually gets some blood flow through that body, and you'll probably find it's a nice one to go into the next routine. Okay, number three. So while you're in that, you've gone from that four-point position, you're going to sort of stay in that position but go into a rotation stretch, okay? So this one's called thread the needle. You go from the scapula press, and then you're going to go put that hand that way, 
and you're going to slide it. And as you slide it, you're going to rotate your upper body and you're going to just reach as far as you can that way until you just basically can't reach any further and then you come back. Now you can either do 10 that same side. Don't overstrain it. You, maybe you're going to rotation, trying to reach into rotation and then come back. Or you can alternate left and right. You might go sort of one that side and then one that side. And you go, oh, geez, I'm tight that side. And you have to work on that. You might get a few clicks and pops in your back. That's okay as long as they don't hurt. But trying to just make sure that you stay sort of in the midline but rotate and reach as far as you can. And this is a nice active stretch. It's almost like the rotation you on the floor, but you're being a bit more active through your upper body when you do that. So that's a good one to do. Then you need to go back into a strengthening exercise. Okay, number four is your bird dog. Now this is a really important one for your spinals to be, but a real good favorite of mine. And this one just really resets that whole spine. So when you're working on your bird dog, important stuff is exactly the same position as your scapular press. So you've done the scapular press before, you know where that is. Straight down, straight down. Rotate those. Get your back into neutral. Turn your core on with the pelvic floor. So get that pelvic floor activated. Get that nice band of flat tightness through here. And then you're gonna to aim to shift all your body weight out of one hand, put it in the other. So if I'm shifting my body weight out of here, or my, hand, my weight through my hand, into my left without shifting left or right, and I'm gonna raise that arm forward. Now that one, I wanna make a strong fist and pull down. Now I've already can feel the load already on this because I've taken half my upper body weight and put it into my left hand. Then I've gotta just stay there and trust my left arm and push that left leg right backwards, pushing my heel to the wall so I activate my glute. Okay, now that's going to give me that cross sling of glute, lumbar fascia through here, and then into my lat, which I've pulled on here. All right, so I'm stabilizing through my right and my left, which is really good for my stability. I'm technically pulling with my left and my right. Okay, I get that nice cross cover over that lumbar spine, and I get that activation through my extensors. I've got my abdominals underneath. Spine's happy, okay? And this is one of McGill's absolute top ones. There's, that's there for a reason, because it is so effective for spinal stability. It's so effective for back pain. And for you, with a sift back in the morning, it's really effective to switch everything on, okay, and give you that stability. Stop those muscles going out of that slight bit of spasm and stiffness. Get them turned on, get them active, get them pain free. Now, number five, you can now afford to start stretching your glutes out because you're probably a bit warmed up, you're a bit active, your back pain's probably feeling a lot better. Some of the contributors are tight glutes. Maybe it's because you have been gardening all day and your glutes are pretty tight. I do find people who have got a tight thoracic spine and stiff lower back, they're stiff in their hips. So, biggest bang for your buck, go for, and this is where you can go straight back on the floor again or in your bed. You know what? I would just go straight for a classic glute stretch like this. Okay, really simple stuff. Now you're gonna feel that. If you're doing your left leg, you're gonna feel that straight in here, all right? But this one, you don't need to worry too much about how much you've been up here and start rolling, okay? You may just find, you can just sit there, let your arms go straight, and see if you can keep your head all the way down into that position, and then just relax. The more you let go through your pelvis, the more you may find you get that quite well. Now people who are super uber flexible may not feel that and they might have to bring their chest in, but if you're probably a super uber flexible person, you're not going to get that stiff in the morning. This is for those tight people. You may find that position is hard enough, okay? If you simply can't even get to that or you get to this position and you feel like you can't get your neck back on the ground, you are very tight. You may need to just put it on a pole or something like that and just do it that way and just relax that way so you can at least you relax and you can just move back a bit or move this up or down to try and get the right position for that as long as I want your head and your neck and your spine flat on the ground. I don't want you round up like that. Right? That needs to be relaxed. That needs to be relaxed. So 
maybe using a wall or something like that is going to be more effective for you. Number six is back to active in your abdominals again. Now, I like doing a McGill curl up at this point because when you've got a stiff back, maybe doing a plank or a side plank is just too much for the first thing in the morning. You might want to save that for, say, a workout later in the day. Remember, this is a cute sort of get that body moving type stretches and exercises. We're not after full blown core strengthening. We just want to get things working. So a McGill curl up is quite a nice way of getting activity through your abdominals to sort of switch off stiffness in your back. Now, McGill curl up's pretty easy stuff. Remember, these are not sit-ups, they're placing sit-ups, if you like, where you have to keep your lower back in neutral. So, one hand under your lower back in the curve there, okay? And then have one leg straight. This is going to keep you neutral through your lower back, especially people who don't like going to flexion, this is great. This hand you can either put in front of your chest or put sort of behind the base of your neck, not on your head, reefing your head forward, Base your neck just to support your neck if you find it's hard to lift your neck up. You're going to go and think, I've got to bring my ribs, my lower ribs, down to my pelvis. I'm trying to shorten that distance there. I'm trying to use my rectus abdominis, my front abdominals, to try and do that. But I want to go nice and slow. So I want you to turn on your pelvic floor, hold a wee. You're going to slowly come up thinking, I've got to shorten the distance between the two, you get a bit of a shake because it's hard, and then slowly down. Now, with this one, the hand is going to stop you going to flexion, but I also want you to stop when your back basically pushes into your hand. So if you come up and your back immediately pushes down your hand, that's as far as you're going to go. Now, the shaking stuff is probably because you've got a bit of weakness there. So when you come up and you're going uh, like that, you know that you've got some weakness in the front of your abdominals, and that means I would work on it. So nice and slow, you're just after a bit of activity. Remember, this is gonna give you a bit of flexion through the lower, through the mid-back. It's gonna give you activation through your abdominals. You're gonna turn your pelvic floor. It's gonna be really nice to try and get that midsection part of your back loosened up and active. And like I said, remember, this is not and you know, a big lower back stretching or strengthening tool. This is that mid to sort of low thoracic stuff, trying to get that section right. Lower back stuff is a whole different killer fish, and that's something you could probably do afterwards. And then your last one is my old favorite, the child's pose. Now with child's pose, you're doing this one to try and reach out and stretch out your thoracic spine and get a bit of hips. So forget about the lower back flexion, that's an added bonus, but we're trying to aim for your thoracic spine and your lats and all the connective tissue through there, but also your hip range. So when you do it, make sure you are wide with your knees because that's going to get you the hip range. Okay, If you're close with your knees, you're just going to stop at the point where you're running out of hip range. It's not going to get much further. So I would go wide, even wider than the mat. Depends on how far you need to go. And I'd also go wide with your hands. Okay, So at this point here, You've got to also watch what you're doing with your shoulders. But when you go down to this position, I want you to sit back on your heels. But imagine like you're trying to keep your hands there and then you drag them. And what this is going to do, if you drop down, and I hope you can still hear me, drop down to this position, okay, you try and then drop the mid part of your back into the floor. So from here, think about, I want to go lower with my chest, not worrying too much about how much I sit down. Okay, so lower with my chest at this point, which is almost like a tabletop position, and then try and get down with my chest. And I can feel that through my mid back, between my shoulder blades. And then if you look at my thumbs, rotate them out or in a bit to suit what's happening on the shoulder. Maybe you might want to go in a bit, go out a bit. Whatever's best to try and get that mid part of your back stretched out. And then worry about sitting down to get the hips and the groins a little bit looser. All right, so. There's your seven. Give them a shot. If you've got that stiffness between your back first thing in the morning, like I said, if it, uh, after a workout during the day before or sleeping in the wrong bed, whatever's bugging you, see if they can get you going and then work on your other stuff like other exercise and core work and other lower back stretches later in the day.